Welcome back to the first video of 2021 with Max TV Original. Uh, I was going to start it with making a circuit board. Uh, how I make it, the way I make it, it's a really nice circuit board. They look pretty much professional. But um, I started shooting and I got into the where you need to expose the circuit board to UV and my unit died. The unit that I've built a while back out of an old printer scanner. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm going to build a new unit. The previous unit, I will show you this, uh, what's left of it, because I've ripped the LED strips out of it. They were too expensive to waste. So I used the HP um, top from the printer scanner and underneath I had the LED strips with the button and the timer. So the timer was adjustable and you could set it and press start. Uh, and there's actually a start button left from it. And it, was, uh, it would expose the circuit board for a certain amount of time and it would be ready. Uh, also, when I, was, when I would be doing a, um, a green um, solder resist, I would uh, press it once and then wait till the cycle finishes and then uh, press a second time because the solder resist needs longer times. So this time I decided to rebuild the unit completely, make it uh, LEDs uh, on the top, not on the bottom. This way it's easier to line up. And... Uh, double uh with a double timer so there'll be two buttons one for circuit boards and one for the green layer so you can uh let's start by taking the glass out because i'm going to use that glass so we're going to take the glass out of this uh printer scanner so that's where you can salvage your piece of glass then we will need also an aluminium uh, channel they call it it's a u-shaped aluminium uh we're going to make the um, enclosure out of it. It's 16 by 16 by 1.5 millimeters. I've already pre-cut it actually. Four sizes to make a square box. So you will notice that it is glass is slightly smaller than the frame itself. So if we put the frame together, the glass will be slightly smaller. The reason for that is that glass is going to be sitting on the springs. So also I've uh, done the top out of plastic just a piece of plastic that would be holding the LEDs and that would go on top. And the bottom part would be the chopping board that I've cut the uh, side off to the size. So the box, that aluminium box, is precisely, as you can see, uh, size of that uh, chopping board. Let's start uh, by installing the hinges. I'll take that off for now. Installing the hinges uh, and lock. So locking it, just using normal hinges, those little ones. And locking mechanism, I've chosen that type. So it just opens up like this. The reason for locking, because uh, the glass will be sitting, so if we have a layer of plastic here, let me just get the drawing board. Looking at the exposing unit, we've got our chopping board with a lock. Then we have the aluminium here. Then we have a layer of glass just here. That would be the glass. There would be a layer of that white plastic containing the LEDs, the UV LEDs on it, and etc. till the end. And on the edges here, we will have the springs. Four springs. So the glass will not be mounted by any sticky tape or anything like that. It'll be held, pushed down by springs pushing it apart from there. So what the reason for that is when we close the unit and uh, if it sits just on the chopping board, it's fine, there is no pressure. But once we put a circuit board in the unit, it will be pushing on the glass and they, when we lock it, it'll have a compression. So it'll compress all the images and everything we have tied to the, uh, to the chopping board. And this way we'll have a nice clean exposure. So that's the reason for the springs. They're not designed to push the glass all the way down, so it's just designed to push it for maybe one, two millimeters in, and that's plenty enough for circuit boards. Wherever the springs are gonna be, I've lost the markings, I'm going to uh, put the spring in, uh, put the uh, glass will be the last thing to put in, so I'll be putting the white uh, plastic in, then I'll be putting the rivet in, in the drilled hole, and riveting it in. So this way, the rivet will actually go into the spring slightly and expand and that will hold the spring in place. Also, corners, I will drill the holes as well in the corners and use an L-shaped um, piece to uh, join those two together. Another thing, you don't want to join it all the way 
in the center. You want to do it at just higher, slightly higher up. This way, you still have that uh, movement for the glass. All the aluminium have been drilled and uh, polished. So now, as you can see, everything is ready to accept accessories. So I'm just going to attach the um, uh, hinges and the lock and then a couple of corners here that uh, will be getting attached and uh, once it's all done we'll move on to the next step. So I've uh, just riveted all the accessories that we needed on and the corners as well. So the next step, as you see all the holes on top, so those three holes, so those are holes that will be holding the springs, the in the front, here and in the back. The rest of the holes will be holding that, I did cut my finger by the way, <laughs> in the process, uh, will be holding this plate. So the next step is uh, the, those two are actually for the project box that's going to be attached here and the wires are going to be going through the middle hole. So the next step is we're going to slide that in, make sure that you trim the corners as you can see I've done that because of the uh, uh, metal inside. So we're going to fit that in and as you see I've riveted the corners to the uh, support. So we're going to be temporarily screwing them in and we're going to mark all the holes that we need to drill in this plastic. The holes have been drilled as you can see and the next step is we're going to be applying aluminium foil. This is the side that's going to go down, that's where the LEDs are going to be. I'm using the adhesive spray and a simple cooking foil or aluminium foil that you can buy at your local supermarket. So we're going to spray uh, just a layer of adhesive. So now that we've applied the foil, and I can see there's a bubble somewhere. Okay, so now that the foil is applied, we're going to use a Stanley knife and just cut it uh, around the perimeter. Uh, should be really easy to do. Now, in my case, the foil will be doing two functions. First, it's going to reflect the UV light that is going to be bouncing off the board and back into, onto the LEDs. And the second, because I chose white acrylic plastic, it will be stopping the UV from going all the way through to the other side. Even though it would be pretty cool to have this glowing, but yeah, I'll skip on that. So we'll get rid of this and let the adhesive dry for a little bit. The next step will be applying the strips. So here is the product now. I've made the lines where the LED strips are going to go. The LED strips are going to be 18 LEDs long. The LED strip itself 8 millimeters wide. So the gap between the strips are going to be 5 millimeters. Here is a completed board with LED strips stuck to it. So I have not connected them yet. But uh, I've uh, also added extra two, I'll hold it on the angle so the lights don't reflect. I've also added two LED strips, RGB ones on the sides. I'm going to common them uh, with a blue color to the UV. And then I'm going to common red and green and put them as a separate light. So when the unit is switched off, you, this will emit orange light uh, just for some illuminations to see what you're doing. And when the unit is on, the orange will go off and they'll switch to blue and those will be UV. So also I am connecting them this side. That's where the wires are going to be coming out and they'll patch straight to, through to here from the center. And also the uh, one wire will go to red green and this one will go to red green. The rest of them, that side will be comment all positive and that side all negative. That's how I'm going to hook them up. And also from the center here, it'll go to the blue. So I'm just going to get on soldering. That took about actually about two hours to do that, to stick them all in. So I'm going to start soldering and I will be right back once it's all soldered together and we can plug it in and test it. So it is uh, connected and everything. Uh, the, the only thing I had to modify is I disconnected the green color from the side lights because it was too green, those are cheap LED strips. So when you turn them on with the red and green, they actually were more green than red. So it's just red now. So let's uh, test it out. Uh, after that, I will just glue the wires on to make sure they're not flopping around. 
and put some silicon around just for reinforcements. Okay, so let's have a look at the red lights. And they're perfect. They actually, let me just connect that. They're actually really bright. It, it may not seem like that in, on the camera, but they are. And now let's have a look at the UV. There we go. So like I said, I've connected those to blue and all those are UV lights. Now I'm just going to add, seems like there's a two dead UV light. Actually, there's more. wonder why they died. Uh, so I might mark them and replace them. I do have some spare ones. Now the panel has been completed and as you can see I've put a bit of a non-acidic silicone just to hold the wires in place and to ensure just in the corners that the LEDs will not fall. The strips will not unstick. So that's the panel. Now we're going to be fitting it into the frame. So first of all we'll grab the frame and we will insert the panel into the frame. Then we're going to fit the wires through. And now that the wires have been fed through, we're going to staple the panel. Do not staple the spring parts yet. Just staple those four and attach the uh, box that's going to be sitting on top with the screws. So you can use uh, staples, doesn't really matter. You can screw that. Uh, but leave the spring holes alone uh, just for now. So I'm going to staple that thing on and I will be right back. So now I have uh, riveted the aluminium and the box to the frame with LEDs as you can see and the next step is to insert the springs so just grab tweezers or something um, that you're comfortable with and insert the springs as you can see I've already inserted one here insert both of them in lining up with the holes and once you're inserted just just like I showed you with this one make sure it lines up with the hole just have a look and ensure that it's centered after you've done that using a larger rivet that just fits right in the hole we're going to rivet it on I'm pretty sure I got the wrong no, that's right so just insert it and rivet it on and now the spring is going to be staying in a place and it's not going to go anywhere okay so now uh, what I've done is I have uh, off shot because it took a while Press the springs with the tweezers down and inserted two rulers. So the rulers are actually now connected to the springs as you can see. So now we'll take a glass, make sure you clean it. And after you clean it, do not touch the um, surface of the glass, especially underneath, because you don't want to put it together and then end up with a, you know, some sort of a residue left on the inside of the glass. So as we're inserting the glass, it's taking a bit of force. We need to push it in. After we push it in under the springs, we pull the rulers out. So that's probably going to take some time as well. So I will do that and I will be right back. So it took me a little bit and I have inserted um, the springs in the glass. As you can see, you can press it. So I did not, it didn't work with the rulers, just in case you're wondering. They were too thick because of the springs in the space. So I've used two blades uh, for the hacksaw. They work perfectly. So now let's do the same with the top, except the top should be a lot easier. We're going to get the springs, if I can remember where they are. Here. So, and we're going to, going to position the springs where the holes are. And we're just going to position them with just here. The first one. And the second one. Just carefully, don't drop them inside because that would be probably a nightmare to get all out of there. They'll get caught on stuff. I don't know if you can see, let me try to get the light in the right spot. If you can see the springs down the bottom. Yeah, you can just see those springs. There's one here and one down there. And with the top same, just carefully, make sure it's right way around. We're going to insert that and squish the glass with plastic, just starting at one end. Slowly but surely put that on. And as you can see, if you don't rush, because if you rush, that's when things will go wrong. That's it. And now, as you can see, that fitted just right and the springs lined up with the um, glass just perfectly. 
So now I'm going to uh, staple those springs again with a larger staple or with the larger rivets. And that's it. Now the top is complete except the electrical part. But now we have our um, light exposing unit and if you press on the glass it just flexes just right amount right amount of pressure enough to again there's not much movement there's actually if you press it it's probably maybe a millimeter two millimeters of, of um, movement but that's perfectly enough because we already have uh, half a millimeter or one millimeter 1.3 millimeters on the edges there so we just need a tiniest little bit for it to compress the glass so now that's done we're going to take our board that we've uh, prepared earlier pick the side the clean one preferably uh, I like this side now we're going to place that on top line it up and start with the back so we're gonna screw let me just see if it aligns fine yep so now we're going to screw those um, hinges to the back make sure it's sitting nice and flat and then we're gonna attach the lock to the front so I will be right back after I screw all the um, hinges and the lock in place. I have attached the bottom board and all the locks. Uh, let's have a look at it. So here are the locks and they lock just fine. So first of all, uh, once it's locked, then you mark and install the second part because it's got to be tight. As you can see, there is no play. Once it's locked, you can't move it slightly. Once it's unlocked, it's fine. That's actually the board inside that just fell. On the back as well, just all screwed. So let's have a look on the inside. You can open it easily. That's the uh, just a test board that I've installed and uh, there is an LED part as well so it's great let's uh, let's lock it and uh, see how well it holds the board so locking it in and put the lock on the board is st sitting there still but as soon as I open the lock yeah you, you heard it 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 fell so yeah now that this machine is done the device itself now let's get to the circuit board and electronics of it uh, so here it is. Now let's get on to the next step of the circuit board. So I've designed this uh, circuit board. I've uploaded all the files in the description below so you can uh, download all the files and it's ready to print files. Uh, now this is the circuit board that I've uh, designed. It has two channels so that's the actual interface that I will be using. It's this, uh, that's just buttons, so there is nothing, no electronics here. It's literally just eliminated buttons, uh, red flashing LED, and a reset button. Uh, the only thing is, I did not design this with a reset button, so it only would have two buttons with LEDs. Uh, you press it, it lights up. So let me explain it. And I'll also explain how to modify it and the little fold that may happen to you that you can rectify. We've got DC coming in, it's going through the diode uh, and uh, positive also goes to the output for the LED strips. The negative goes to relay pretty much all over the place. It goes to relay, uh, which is a, you can, I've used a dual pole dual throw, but you can use a, a single pole dual throw. So, and obviously the negative goes to relay and the out contacts and the outputs going uh, to the general output for LEDs. So one is the one with the smaller track is for the red LEDs for the standby mode and the thicker track is for the whole LED, UV LED array. Those two resistors, that's just output for, um, uh, in my case, that LED. So when it's on, it'll be flashing. When it's off, those will light up, light up green. It goes through a voltage regulator. A uh, little uh, MOSFET is driving the relay. Don't forget about the diode. You'd need a diode to prevent it from transient currents. So then it goes to the 556 timer. It's a 7556. It's a dual channel timer. Uh, we've got two VRs so you can adjust the time. So I'm not going to go through. That's the connector for these uh, buttons and for the LEDs for the buttons. So when you're pressing it, say I press this one, that button will light up telling us that this is what's active. 
So uh, just with the times, this is set to go from between a minute to about maybe six minutes, five minutes. That goes for a bit longer, they're different VRs. This one's 500K, this is a 200K. Also, there's a resistors, R3 and R4. So if you would be using this circuit for any other application, uh, not just for UV exposing, but say you need a short delay and you need 20 seconds, I would suggest just putting a zero ohm link on those R3 and R4 and just using a VRs of um, your desire to, depending on your application. Another thing you may find that when you apply the DC and power the board up, sometimes it'll false trigger the timer. So to prevent this, if that happens, it may not happen, but if for some reason you have a dirty power supply or something, uh, it happens, what you need to do is a pin four and pin eight, I believe it is, uh, 10. So pin four and pin 10, disconnect them. They're connected to five volt supply from the voltage regulator. You would need to disconnect those two pins and you would need, let me draw this for you. Disconnect it here and disconnect um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and disconnect it here and then that pin will have to be connected to this supply through a 22k resistor and same as here so that would be connected through a resistor 22k and also that pin would have to be connected to ground through a one microfarad capacitor and same as here so one microfarad just ceramic now if you do this modification then you can take a pin 4 and attach a button to ground and that would be your reset button you can't do it uh, without applying those resistance capacitors because if you do you uh, essentially just shorting it out um, you're literally shorting the main power of this, um, the output of this voltage regulator to the ground. So you do need to put a 22K resistor and a one microfarad capacitor, and then you can use a button to reset it. So that's what I've done here. I've just added, uh, literally, as you can see, I've, um, let me zoom in. So that little mess here is I've added those capacitors. You can see that little link here. Uh, that is that little capacitor is sitting there. It's very small. It's really hard to see right here. And the second capacitor is sitting where I, right here. And that's those two 22K resistors. So you can modify current design. Uh, that's about it. So we've got two outputs. Well, two inputs, that's for the buttons, so which is this one and this one, that's the button one and two. And that's the output uh, of the timer one and two for LEDs. That's common. They're already going through resistors, so uh, then uh, the outputs actually bridging together through two signal diodes and they're going through a 100 ohm resistor into the MOSFET and that MOSFET triggers the relay. So that's about it about the schematic. Now let's uh, let's plug it in. And again, you can use different connectors. Um, I've uh, I've used just the ones that I had. I didn't want to use a brand new one, so that's the ones from the old um, exposure unit. And um, yeah. So now let's uh, let's get the unit and let's plug it in. So I've plugged it in, and the unit is now powered on. So. Here's the switch just to turn the power to the unit on. So as you can see, it's green lights on both. Let me just turn this light off so you can see better maybe. All right. So uh, next thing, if you want to start the first one, which would be for a dry film, you press it and it turns on. And a minute later, it turns off. If you want to reset it, you just press reset and it's reset. Same with the second one, you press it, and the second one is a different timer for a longer time, or shorter time, depending on your application, but at the moment we're doing it for exposing unit. As you can see, the unit is operational. You can see the UV lights there, and if I press reset, it resets. And you can see the red lights are on the sides there. Uh, and again, pressing that will trigger the first one. The next step is the fine tuning it. So before you put it all together, 
you do want to fine tune it. This is a really um, tricky part and very annoying. So how I recommend doing this is we've got those two VRs uh, for channel one and channel two. Uh, grab the uh, blank board or small one, just your cutoffs that you have, laminate them with a uh, dry film. I uh, shouldn't be doing this in a light, but again, I've got to show you. So normally I would be doing this under orange light. So that uh, machine, channel one, I have tuned for two minutes 20. And what we're going to do is take some black electrical tape and tape half of it. You don't have to do that, but I'm just conserving some film. So this way we can run the experiment again if it doesn't work. So I'll tape half of it to protect it from UV light. The second half, I'm going to use just a normal uh, stencil from any circuit board and we're going to overlay it and we're going to put it in the machine and expose it for uh, that time that I've set, which is 2 minutes 20 and see what happens. So I'm about to start the process and it goes for 2 minutes 20, so let's do this. Okay, just as you saw, it switched off by itself. So let's check the results. Let's get the board out of there and see what we got. All right, so we do have um, exposure. I'm not sure if it's good enough or not. It does seem to be a bit dull. So we're going to run it for a bit longer with the other side. So I'm going to tape now this side. And what I'm going to do is, is expose it for 2 minutes 20 and then expose it for another 30 seconds extra on top of that without touching the settings and see if it'll come up any darker. Let's just compare those two sides. It is slightly more vivid, I would say. I wouldn't worry about the center of it because um, that's where the tape was and it was lifting off. So judging by the sides, so the one on the right is um, a bit duller, but let's uh, take a bit of a developer, peel the film off and develop it and see what happens. Okay, so I've developed the board and it looks horrible. The reason for that is the vellum paper. I've looked online and I've, personally, I've always, all my life, I've been using transparency film. I've never used a vellum paper this time. I thought, all right, well, everyone's raving about the vellum paper and I gave it a try and it is horrible. Uh, so do not use vellum paper, that's trash. So we're gonna, I'm gonna strip that and repeat the experiment with um, transparency film this time and see how we go and I can pretty much guarantee we're gonna have a really good effect. I have re-laminated the board and um, it's a bit dark because I turned the overhead light off. So I'm gonna be using my usual transparency film as a test and it's still set to two minutes um, and um, 20. So I might actually increase the time just slight little tiny bit because I know the previous time I had for about three minutes. I'm going to load it in and expose it. So we'll see. I'm going to do the whole board and see what happens. I just got it out. It's been in the unit for two minutes and 40 seconds. And as you can see, it is exposed perfectly. Absolutely perfect. So now just to make sure we're going to put it in the tub with the developer and develop the board. So as you can see I've rinsed it and the board turned out to be perfect. With a really high resolution it is great so transparency film is the way to go. So next step that this is adjusted number one and we know it works just fine. We're going to take a Loctite and we're going to take a little bit of a drop and put it on that uh, trim pot that we have just to seal it and make sure that um, we don't touch it anymore. The next step we're going to do is adjusting the second one, which is the, your solder resist. So let me just apply some solder resist uh, paste to it and we'll start exposing the board. So I have tuned the second uh, uh, trim port to about 5 minutes 40 seconds. So I've got the board ready for a photo resist. So let's put this in the machine and expose it and see if the photoresist will uh, wipe off after we've done it. Okay, it's been five minutes and 40, so we have finished exposing the bot. Let's have a look um, what happens. So I'll get that out. So let's peel that off. 
and it seems like it's done a good job as you can see all the stuff that is not supposed to be yep yeah that's, uh, that's obviously misaligned because I misaligned it but as you can see it uh, did a really good job everything is solid and everything that is supposed to be exposed is exposed again this is a test board this is not for real we're just testing the times and yeah so that's the set time so approximately the first one you want to set to approximately two minutes and 40 seconds or so I think it was and the second one is five minutes and 44 the soldier resist so that's that's it I'm just gonna put the unit together and get it over and done with so the unit is now completed. I've put a Loctite on both of the trim pots and they're all adjusted now. So all I need to do is print um, some names for the buttons. But as you can see, the unit is working great. The UV light is there. Nice and bright. It's a blank board. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that helped you making your own uh, photo UV exposing unit. I'll see you next time. I'm Max, bye.